Well, the Commission's work on best practice is actually very simple to understand, and yet it's a very powerful concept. Uh, from the moment we're born, we learn, and we learn from others. And as you grow older, so you start to adapt what you've learned for your own use. And uh, the Commission has really just simply taken that concept and um, gathered information from a variety of people and projects around the country and simply set out to share it with others so that they can benefit from it. As an organisation, I think it's important that the Commission for Rural Communities makes best practice stick. And when I talk about best practice, I mean a commonly used approach that helps improve practice. What I'm not talking about is where we use best practice to standardise things, because obviously one size doesn't fit all, and what may work in Northumberland won't work down in Cornwall. It's important to recognise that, and, and, and best practice should deliver a quantifiable, measurable benefit on the ground. It should fill in a gap in provision, if you like, whether you're talking about healthcare, transport, or other types of service provision. One thing I hope this short film will do is, is highlight those approaches, um, give staff those hooks to, to, to build on that they can sort of learn from and hopefully help them when they're looking to sort of think about their outcomes, um, looking at defining best practice, looking about engaging with their audiences. It's important when you're considering dissemination to make sure you engage with your audiences effectively, you use the right tool for the job if you like. So if you were looking to engage with a select committee, you'd use a different form of engagement and a different approach than you would with engaging with a rural community. And one of the most effective tools of a dissemination we found in order to bring together government departments is that of seeing is believing tools. The CRC has definitely helped us um, to promote the work of our members and to raise awareness more generally of issues faced by young people and by those who work with them in rural areas. They've got a role to play in terms of uh, working with partners like ourselves in order to identify good practice and best practice. But also I think they have um, lots of contacts, they're able to influence at government level. And in terms of the seen as believing visits, without their contacts, we would, you know, small projects in rural areas would never have been able to get a senior policy um, advisor from DFES, for example, to come and hear um, face to face that their, their views about that, that policy. So I think it's that bringing people together is a really crucial part of what they do. Relationships are vital for the CRC. We need good relationships with communities and with organisations and with government. Our relationships with communities and with local organisations gives us a real reality check of what's happening on the ground. What are the issues facing communities and what are the frustrations and the barriers that they're facing as they try and tackle these problems. But it also gives us a really good opportunity to find out the good practice, the solutions, the ideas that they have for overcoming these issues, how they're going about it, because the best solutions are always homegrown. And we can take that information and share it between rural communities, share it between other organisations, so that they can feed off each other. But importantly, we can also take that back up to government and advise government on how its policy is impacting on the ground and how it needs to change its policy and its practice to help rural communities. Once you've defined best practice, it's, it's important also to think about your outcomes. What do you want to do with that best practice? How, how do you need to meet with your different audiences, engage with your audiences, if you like? And that, that sort of boils down to effective dissemination. pillars of effective dissemination of people, process and products. The show and tell events work from the CRC's point of view because we're actually seen as recognising the practice that the local authorities and housing associations are actually doing on the ground and we're also wanting to disseminate that further to a more of a national audience. So it's where government has changed policy, those local authorities and housing associations that have seized on that and are making um, you know, really good changes with it, um, actually using that knowledge to, to illustrate what we think should be replicated elsewhere. It's a recognition that the Commission for Rural Communities, which is the rural advocate that is there to advise government on rural policy, has actually 
notice what they're doing on the ground and they're saying, you know, this is good, this is good and this is actually going to make a difference. Um, so it has that role. But the second role, it's for those areas to celebrate really, um, you know, to actually pat themselves on the back um, and to continue the joint working. What may work for engaging with a select committee, for instance, if that was one of your, your main audiences, may not work for if you're engaging with a, a local community. It's important to realise that you get the right tool for the job, whether it be a seeing is believing tour, a show and tell visit, or a conference or a, or a symposium. The symposiums that the Commission for Rural Communities have run fit very neatly with their other best practice work. Um, in that they gather, they bring together the people from the projects that featured in their case studies and also people from overseas who are doing similar related complementary work and they share the practice that those and experiences of the people involved for the benefit of everybody. It's very straightforward but again very powerful. I think with everything that the CRC does, best practice needs to run through that. So when we do evaluations, when we look at policy, when we look at how something is impacted on the ground, we need to always be looking at best practice. And in addition to that, we need to always be looking beyond producing a report. So yes, we can produce a report and we can put it on the website and we can put it on the shelves within the offices, but then how do you get that out and to the communities themselves that need to know what's happening with policy in their area? I think it's really important to recognise as well that this film is, is not the be on or end all of things, it's, it's part of a very large suite of information that we've already produced over the last 18 months to two years and one thing I would stress as well, it's, it's really important to, when you look working with best practice and dissemination to, to follow things up. If you hold an event or you have produced a report, it's, it's, it's important to look beyond those, to look Look at your outcomes, don't forget that. Look at your outcomes, look beyond the report, look beyond the conference, look beyond the symposium. When we first got involved with Jackie and her team um, for the Seeing is Believing visits, it didn't just stop there. We, we certainly recognised that we wanted to take that work forward. And what we've been able to do is to, con is to enable other projects around the country to go and visit some of the projects we identified in the North East and to enable that work to continue. And also, um, there were a series of paper-based and web-based case studies about the projects and we've been able to use those um, to continue the work and to promote it and to publicise it. As an officer working for the National Association of Local Councils, which is the national representative body for parish and town councils, I felt it was good to get involved with the CRC over these award schemes, which is the Community Empowerment Awards, because we wanted to highlight and showcase best practice amongst parish and town councils, so that the general public and other parish and town councils could see this, use this information within their own areas and, and work with that and basically increase capacity and output levels and effectiveness really in engaging with their communities. CRC brings to the table a certain national recognition and value. Um, they help drive agendas forward, they have definitely help to drive these community empowerment awards forward. Because of CRC's involvement it probably doubled, tripled the number of people entering. Being a well-known national body they give it a certain prestige and kudos and they've helped to attract more and more entrance into this award scheme, I think, because Parish and Town Councils recognise the name of Commission for Rural Communities. It, it has a certain, certain value in itself. So, you know, we've got many, many entrants over the last year and we'll continue to do that this year as well. We both get something out of it, and more importantly, um, our members, um, uh, who essentially, um, are on the most part, on the rural uh, side of things, um, are also people that the CRC want to, want to engage with. We get the support from you know, a well-respected uh, central government body and the CRC get our support in as much as that we can point them in the right direction uh, for certain things, for, for best practice examples. As the Commission for Rural Communities, our job is very clearly to understand and to develop ways of responding to the challenges that face communities across rural England. I think we now have a very good understanding of what those challenges and what those needs are, especially among those people who face disadvantage. But the challenge now, I think, is to build on that understanding, working with those communities, working with our partners in government agencies, government itself and others, to provide really effective solutions to those problems. 
and we've done a lot of work to identify what those best practice solutions really are. And we need to do more. We need to work across England, across the UK, in Europe and beyond, wherever we find best practice, to pick it up, to understand it, to see what makes it work and to see how we can apply it in England's rural communities. So that's where we're at at the moment. And I think the importance of best practice and how we make that happen, how we not only identify it but help local authorities, regional development agencies uh, and others and how we make government policy itself uh, respond to those ideas. That's our next big challenge and one that I'm sure as we develop the organisation, as we develop our policy base as the Commission, I'm sure that we can have a huge impact on making that best practice stick in England's rural communities.